distinguished ladies and gentlemen, scholars and scientists who are gathered here, a very sincere and cordial welcome to all of you. Come, but don't join us without your music. We have a celebration here. Rise and beat the drums. We are Mansur who said, An al haq I am God. We are in ecstasy, drunk, but not from wine made of grapes. Whatever your thought has are about us, we are far, far from them. This is the night of the Sema, when we whirl to ecstasy. There is light now, there is light, there is light. This is true love, which means farewell to the mind. There is farewell tonight, farewell. Tonight, each flaming heart is a friend of music. Longing for your lips, my heart pours out of my mouth. Hush. You are made of feeling and thought and passion. The rest is nothing but flesh and bone. We are the soul of the world, not heavy or sagging like the body. We are the spirit's treasure, not bound to this earth, to time or space. Love is our mother. We were born of love. Live in love's ecstasy, for love is all that exists. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, members of the Islamic World Academy of Sciences, welcome to the spiritual and poetic realm of Mevlana Jalaluddin Rumi, to the ideals of Sufism, and to the ceremonies of the whirling dervishes. Come, Rumi invited all to love and light, to trance, to soaring. He invited all to the unity of faith, to the oneness of humanity, to universal harmony, to peace on earth. Like a compass, I stand firm with one leg on my faith and roam with the other leg all over the 72 nations. 72 nations hear of their secrets from us. We are the reed flute whose song unites all nations and faiths. In Anatolia, the 13th century, was an age of miracles, perhaps the most stirring era of Turkish culture, Yunus Emre, Hacı Bektaş Veli, Nasreddin Hoca, and Mevlana Celaleddin Rumi. That was the golden age of humanism, of the ideal of humanity united in peace. The Anatolian Renaissance came a full century earlier than the Renaissance in Europe. Dante was eight years old when Rumi died. Petrarch lived a hundred years later than Mevlana Jiratin Rumi, Erasmus two and a half centuries later, when Europe was still in its medieval darkness, Anatolia had seen the light. Rumi said, I roamed the lands of Christendom from end to end, searching all over, but he was not on the cross. I went into the temples where the Indians worship idols and the Magians chant prayers to fire. I found no trace of him. Riding at full speed, I looked all over the Muslim Kaaba, but he was not at that sanctuary for young and old. Then I gazed right into my own heart. There I saw him. He was there and nowhere else. Hegel, the great German philosopher, once observed in exploring God as absolute mind, uh, if we want to see the consciousness of the one in its finest purity and sublimity, we cannot do better than to read Rumi's verses. Mevlana Jalaluddin Rumi, who was born in 1207, almost 800 years ago, and that year of birth will be celebrated all over the world next year, and who died in 1273, is a towering figure of mysticism and universalist spirituality who wielded a profound impact on Islamic philosophy for seven centuries and whose influence on many spheres of Western culture has been steadily growing in the past 200 years. His mysticism gave impetus to the Hegelian dialectic and Bergsonian thought. Recognition of this mystic philosopher's enduring moral force and the intellectual stature elsewhere in the world, especially in Europe and in the United States, has prompted many figures 
to lavish praise on his poems, which celebrate the ideals of love, peace, ecumenism, and the unity of God and human beings. The British Orientalist Reynold A. Nicholson, an indefatigable translator of Rumi's verse into English, paid tribute to him as the greatest mystical poet of any age. And Hegel saw him as one of the great poets and thinkers in world history. For his West Worcestershire Divan, Goethe drew inspiration from some of Rumi's poems translated into German. One of the immortals of Persian classical poetry, Jami, who died as the 15th century came to an end, said of Mevlana Jaltin Rumi, he is not a prophet, but he has written a holy book referring to the great Masnavi, the monumental work of 26,000 couplets, which also has been characterized as the Quran of mysticism and the inner truth of the Quran. Rumi's masterpiece has been compared with Dante's Divina Commedia in terms of its humanistic scope. Franklin D. Lewis, who published in the year 2000 a massive study entitled Rumi, Past and Present, East and West, observes that Rumi, who wrote a half century before Dante, reflects a much more ecumenical spirit and a far broader and deeper religious sensibility. It is said that Mahatma Gandhi occasionally quoted Rumi's couplet, to unite, that is why we came, to divide, that is not our aim. UNESCO's first director general, Sir Julian Huxley, lauded the Anatolian mystic philosopher's spirit of international brotherhood. In 1958, Pope John XXIII wrote a special message. In the name of the Catholic world, he said, I bow with respect before the memory of Mevlana Jalaluddin Rumi. Rumi and the culture of the whirling dervishes, whose ceremonies we shall be observing this evening, and as they are called in the uh, Mevlavi sect, which was created in Rumi's name after his death, have come to be known in the Western world, the whirling dervishes, the Mevlavis. They inspire a wide spectrum of creative genre, not only in Muslim countries, but also in the rest of the world. In the late 1990s, Rumi stood as the best-selling poet in America, believe it or not, according to the Los Angeles Times and the Christian Science Monitor. Dancers like Ted Sean and Maurice Bejar, theatrical directors like Robert Wilson, composers like Philip Glass, and film directors like Peter Brook have employed in their works many of Rumi's quintessential ideals, also the Merlevi rituals. Rumi heralded in the 13th century a brave new age of humanistic mysticism that defied the orthodox concept of the duality of God and the human being. His ideas stressed the deathlessness of the loving soul the joys of passion, the inherent worth, even godliness of human existence, the aesthetic as well as the ecstatic imperative of faith, the need to go beyond the confines of scholasticism and to transcend schisms within and among religions, races, and nations. At a time when Anatolia was ravaged by the Mongol invasions and the Crusades, Rumi was preaching the supremacy of love and peace and understanding. He said, whatever you think of war, I'm far, far from it. Whatever you think of love, I'm that, only that, all that. One of his universal statements is remarkable for its age. He wrote, Hindus, Kipchaks, Anatolians, Ethiopians, they all lie peacefully in their graves separately yet all the same color. Rumi's recognition of women's equality and high status was unique for the Middle Ages and antedated our modern views by seven centuries. He said, women is God's light, not the mere object of man's delight. Woman is not a creature, but a creator. He also wrote one of the most memorable lines of the ecumenical spirit, in all mosques, temples, churches, 
I find one shrine alone. He stands as one of history's eminent visionaries of humanitarian mysticism. His has been called a theology of tolerance. His ideas are still relevant in our age when the world is convulsed by war, ignorance, and injustice. When weapons and ignorance come together, he said, tyrants arise to devastate the world with their cruelty. And the Mevlevi movement, initiated by his son and followers after Rumi's death, spread from Konya, not far from the city of Ankara, to other countries. The movement, the sect, had congregation places in 14 uh, cities and 76 lodges, from India to North Africa, from former Yugoslavia to Baghdad and Aleppo. The whirling dervishes sect played a major spiritual and creative role in the Ottoman state. In modern Turkey, not only Rumi's moral force, but also the ceremonies of the whirling dervishes that we'll be witnessing this evening exert a strong impact. When Turkey was in its national liberation struggle from 1919 to 1922, under the leadership of Mustafa Kemal Pasha, later Atatürk, the Mevlevis gave that national effort their support through a battalion of their own. After the Turkish Republic was established, President Mustafa Kemal Pasha went to Konya in 1924. He visited the Rumi mausoleum and wrote in the guest book in his own handwriting, and I quote, every visitor to Rumi's mausoleum is a refugee from reactionary dogma. The idea of soaring to God, standing, whirling, in motion is a natural expression of the Turkish genius. Rumi is a lover of transformation who transcends the ages, a great reformer who welded Islam to the Turkish soul. He upheld the principles of social revolution and the freedom of conscience. Thus wrote Mustafa Kemal Pasha in 1924. This year, probably in the year 2007, as many as two million visitors will go to the Rumi mausoleum in Konya, this being the 800th anniversary of his birth. And that will be a record number of visitors when dervishes will present their ceremonies and they will go from Konya to Europe and the United States where they are bound to create great excitement as they always have. That Sema ceremony is a powerful spiritual soaring to ecstasy, acceleration of love, inner enlightenment during the soul's heightening toward God. Rumi's whirling dervishes seek ecstasy. In their rituals, with musical accompaniment, as you will see and hear this evening, they turn gracefully from left to right, left because left is where the heart is, the heart is where love vibrates. The right hand opens up to heaven, the left hand points down to the ground. That way, they receive the benediction and the bliss of God the Beloved and transmit love through the left hand to the world, to other human beings. The whirling thus becomes a spiritual soaring, the perfect trance. Rumi has been claimed by several countries and cultures, by Iran, by Turkey, by Afghanistan, the Arabs, and even some Muslim communities of Russia on grounds of genealogy, birthplace, language, cultural orientation, adopted country, burial place, and the territory of impact. The strongest are those, in my opinion, advanced by Iran because his huge output was in Persian, and by Turkey because he lived and created in Turkey for the last 44 years of his life, and his strongest impact was on Turkish culture. Internal references found in Rumi's own work, however, show that Rumi wanted no national identification or citizenship in terms of our modern concepts and definitions. He sought rather to belong to mankind and to transcend religious schism and national allegiances. His mystic spirit 
can and must be claimed not by one country, one culture, one religion, but by all humanity. He belongs to the entire world. And what is this whirling of ours? A greeting from the inmost friends of the heart. When their messages arrive, they give the weary soul vigor and comfort. Caught in this wind, the mind's branches reach out and bloom all over again. A strange sweetness never felt before spreads through the flesh and the mouth revels in the luscious taste of the reed flute and the player's lips. We hold no drink in our hands, yet the hour of a thousand joys whirls around us. Those who are frozen forever, unmindful of this music, those who are lower than the dead, shall now turn into the quintessence of dust. Words can never contain or portray or praise the beauty of the visible face. Look deep with a thousand borrowed eyes, it still lies beyond sight. To find your joy and bliss, look through, look out from your own window. Let the whirling run wild and take flight, for you are life added to the life of the whirling ecstasy. You are the glittering joy of the age. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, now the ceremonies of the whirling dervishes. Thank you. 